my name's Glyn Pooley and I'd like to talk about art. This time my subject is... S. H. Raza. Fascinating artist. Nice long progression in his work as well. Very interesting. Born in 1922 in Madhya Pradesh. Developed as an artist with obviously Indian roots then took a kind of uh, route into Western European art, then focused on being true to his roots, and eventually at the end of his life, going back to live in India. So what you can see, you know, when we looked at Ra's work before, we saw they were quite geometrical and abstract. Well, that develops in his later work. But his early work is fairly traditional, although it's quite expressionistic, as you can see here. These are watercolour and gouache paintings. Gouache is a kind of popular medium in Indian painting. It was a traditional medium that they made the old Mughal paintings, you know, the, the little miniatures with. And you can get a nice finish with it, with it you know, in the end by waxing it up, maybe some warm wax or something like that. And that gives a nice deep finish. Traditionally, they used a kind of shell to polish it. It takes a bit of a while. But in terms of the, you know, the lovely expressionist technique there and the subject matter, it's just a back lane, you know, near where he was kind of living. So it was a very humble subject, you know, in that, in that way. But there's the energy of uh, life in India as we see from these early expressionist works, and the coloration as well as certain colours which appear, certain blues, certain oranges, and things like that. Um, but it's very engaging. Um, and you can see from this beautiful picture of Mumbai, uh, he uses the gouache really effectively here because it's like a, a body colour, it's like slightly thicker than watercolour, people used it uh, to a matte finish. But he engages with the surface that he's working on there of the paper or the board and he lets that run through it so that kind of warm ochre almost orangey color uh, becomes a key feature of the whole piece um, and then his brush dances across the surface to so that we can kind of just moves our eye around it and we get it, every part is interesting and intriguing but even in this what we could call a kind of figurative technique there's still abstract qualities are just about to kind of uh, emerge so you know there's just lovely colors there's lovely brightness there's lovely light there's lovely energy in that in that piece you see where all those marks have uh, gone on to get the atmosphere there utilizing certain warm colors and cool colors and a full range of tones then from the dark indigos to the um to the, to the white the opaic white and you know when we look at his some of his early Watercolor, this is painted in 1946. Um, you can see that uh, he's starting to use watercolor in quite an abstract, abstract way. So, you know, when he went to art college um, in Najpur, he, he was introduced to some of these uh, more Western uh, techniques, the abstract expressionists, some of the work of people like Mondrian and Kandinsky, you know, with flat areas of color with a kind of more symbolistic use of the paint was you were sharing that. So you get these lovely radiant oranges and blues, which just sit. I talk about space in a picture often. So he creates this lovely space there with those flat areas, which offers a lovely contrast to the to the simple suggestions of the people. So you know we read them as people, but they're just abstract marks of course. But they again they their relative size and the way they've been put on. It's a nice counter counterpoint to the to the flat areas and the oranges and the blues of the spatial part of it. Uh, and this one, Benares, you can see that he's really utilised the surface. It's coming through often. That tone oatmeal colour is there. So he was a very good tonal painter as well as a colourist. And that's what kind of made his work stand out. He had his first exhibition when he was 24. And it was so successful, all these pictures kind of sold out, that he won a scholarship, a French scholarship, to go over and study in France. And that's what he did and moved in that direction. Um, but you can see, you know, he was a great draftsman. 
He's a great colorist and he understood tone very well. And that's very effective for when he makes his abstract uh, pictures later. So, you know, as well as that mid-tone holding everything together, we get these amazing, sometimes highly saturated colors, like this beautiful yellow there, you know, and anyone who's been to India know that it's full of color, and whether it be yellows, greens, they love orange and colors like that, all pulled together. It's just a, a dancing cultural thing, really, you know, probably comes out of the, the Hindu tradition, where they used to paint all their their temples and everything is sacred and color has a sacredness to it when it's used in in these kinds of ways so you know he's trying to engage with that and another very seems kind of direct expressionistic gouache painting thin washes and then overlaid with more opaque more opaque paint you know you can see the brush marks as they've gone on so economically he's just using the marks to create the the figures and the energy, the light against dark there. You know, you feel as if you're in amongst that very warm city environment with everything moving, everything vibrating, everything having this kind of energy force. And that is those kinds of key elements that led him towards his, his later work, you know, when he was trying to get to the essence of what is painting about. And, and you know, the Indians are very interested in the essence of everything, our so you know, our, our soul, if you like, how to express that, the big picture, and his work kind of takes these steps through. But you see it, you know, at these early stages being present. And you can see here how his work's become more abstract, and that's engaging with some of the wet more wet Western traditions that we that we mentioned earlier, whether it be, you know, Kandinsky or, you know, some of the this is almost like a constructivist painting whereby, you know, everything is in included. You know, we can read the aspects of it. One, one part of the picture is overlaid to the next part. It's just trying to get more of a layered interpretation. You know, it's very different from presenting everything in one plane there to now presenting something a little bit more layered. So you, you know, you, you move through whether it be the building and then the fence is going on, then a person. They're kind of separate entities, but they're overlaid one aspect on top of the other. Not dissimilar how the you would do with cubism. So obviously this is connecting with you know, Picasso and the like, that kind of very dominant modern art force. This is would be a late painting for a cubist painting, of course, because cubism you know, emanated in France in 1906. And even this style of cubism would have been about 1914 to 15, which is uh, an analytical kind of cubism. But the idea of cubism is to see multi-dimensional aspects of the thing that's in front of you and trying to share multi-dimensional aspects of your experience of being present at a particular time and a particular place. Multiple views, like as if you can walk around a three-dimensional object, and that kind of engages kind of space and time aspect, which is something which Raza really likes to engage with later. So, you know, we can read all these different aspects on the table, what was, what's happening there, the jars and the fruit and things like that. And then we can kind of move around them and see them from different light sources. We see some from above, some from the side, you know, different perspectives, etc. Looking down, maybe that being a wall or floor underneath it you know that's a traditional cubist way of working so he's deconstructing his painting and then reconstructing it from a slightly different perspective multi-dimensional perspective abstract express perspective and color becomes an emphasis and then he goes to france in the uh, in the 50s um he marries a french artist and you know they the french really take to his work and as time goes on, they start to give him all kinds of honours. And he kind of does really well. I think they were just intrigued to, you know, have this Indian artist coming from that perspective in the 50s and 60s um, in France would have been something a bit special, a bit different, of course, you know. And he was very articulate, rather, and he gave lecture tours, not just in France and Paris, but even over into the States. So he kind of was deep. He became more and more deeply involved with 
Indian traditions and blending them with what with the Western technique. And that was something quite, quite new. So you can see he's engaged with he liked the, like the rural villages. So he paints these rural villages in what you could say is quite an abstract expressionist way. So he's, he's relating to them. Now, when you saw the work that was painted in India with the gouache patterns, they were kind of light and airy and quite fluid and with use of the materials. But now he moves into oils and then he moves it into acrylic. So everything becomes a bit heavier, a bit darker and a lot more textured you know which is something you can't really do with gouache watercolor so he's engaging with the texture and the depth of the, of the land but break he starts to break everything down into their main structures we can read this as a village we can re read this as the houses standing side by side etc etc but this light which is above it is a kind of metaphysical kind of light it's got a strong presence you know it's not naturalistic light which is you know, shining from the left or right to cast shadows. This is almost like metaphorical of an inner light force, which uh, the paintings start to develop. Um, and you can see uh, in this village picture as well, how the abstraction really starts to, to take on now. We can still read these as like village rooftops running through a mountain, you know, mountain or hillside. But the, how the, the shapes have become in this case very, hard edged, very spiky, but surrounded by this deep, rich, ruby, almost red and uh, cadmium red earth, something much more substantial and uh, solid. It's just trying to go deep into the land and see it, see it kind of differently. This it was this constant searching for something uh, new and different, which is what took Raza in the direction that he did. You know, again, using a, a village scene but based on that um, diagonal plane, but becoming more and more abstract now, you know, like like the abstract expressionists in America kind of thing, trying to deep root the emotional, deep emotional feeling you get from being in a particular place. Try, it's trying to absorb it really deeply and then represent it with a certain set of colours and a certain set of textures. It's like opening all your senses to a particular place and a particular time and notating how that really get, makes you feel and then using a certain kind of victor, a visual pictorial language to represent it. And because Raza was tuned into this Indian sensibility, he kind of was an, enabled to, to do that. And you see it, you know, again, how it becomes so fragmented, you know, we can just about make up the... The, the tops of the, the buildings and maybe the church there. But we start to get this real feeling that it's about the intensity of the symbolic use of the colours now, whether it be that particular red or that particular yellow-orange becomes more and more in, important. It's like fractured the whole picture playing and to give us these little moments of deep emotional connection. He's almost made a pattern like Cezanne would have, um, but imbued it with his Indian sensibility um, and his relationship to colour, shape and form. And then this becomes even more abstract. Uh, I mentioned the abstract expression, expressionists in America. Well, as part of them and as they evolve, you had these painters like that made what we call colour field painting. And colour field paintings were painters that kind of filled their canvas with a certain kind of colour or a few colours that when you stood in front of them, they were often large pictures, they moved you. They had, so the colours had a certain kind of vibration that would, you know, transform in, inside you. And that's what these artists were trying to, trying to find, a universal language, a universal colour language, as well as light and texture language that will kind of move the viewer from, from inside and, you know, fantastic exponent of that was Mark Rothko. Anyone that's been in front of Mark Rothko's pictures just know that they just have a resonance that seemed to just they'll stop you in your tracks, really. And so there's a, what you could call this kind of spiritual content to that, this universal language, which is underwritten, underpinning. And, and Raza, of course, loved that aspect of it because it was in the culture right the way through. So you got this 
image here where he's got like this village scene, which is kind of still pretty abstract, but we can just about make out sky, we can make out trees, make out a building, river, that kind of thing in it. But then it, it's just half the picture now. And the rest is this colour field aspect of his deep connection and feeling to that place representing represented in in the colour. Um, and he starts to use Sanskrit and Hindu text as well, which you know, which talk about deeper meaning of uh, life and its kind of presence. Um, this is what he says: My work is my own inner experience and involvement with the mysteries of nature and form which is expressed in colour, line, space and light. Colour, line, space and light. So he starts to use universal shapes, traditional universal shapes to engage with that. And so you can see traditionally in Indian uh, painting, they use the square a lot. Um, Asian painters use that often. It's a kind of an artwork with equal sides, four equal sides. So nothing has preference so the idea is to meditate on it they become like like mandalas where you just meditate from a central spot and then radiate out around it so this one you know it can be read it's based on a landscape in india so you, you can read it as the colors of the place etc but you also get the emotive feeling of it you know the sense of the heat the sense of um you know other aspects that are being revealed you know, we'll talk about some of the metaphysical aspects which appear in his work, but we'll keep it simple. You know, fire, one of the universal principles that we're all made up of, but it is, you know, it's big thinking painting now. Um, you can see in this picture, this broken area, that suggests this symbol, sim symbolic use of the fire or the warmth in this abstract picture. So there's the heat element is there. And when you take it to the abstract nature, fire, of course, coming from India, often a very hot place, has a massive resonance. But fire also has the ability to kind of transform, transfigure. And it's looking at those fundamental elements that he tries to put forward now in his, in his abstract content. So you've got an image of that could be the sun, and you've got these dynamic shapes, these di dynamic diagonal shapes, which are kind of energies you know like an energy force and so the whole picture kind of vibrates with a certain kind of warm energy if you like but a fundamental warm energy and then this picture sarastra is one of his first pictures that combines those two elements you know he's using these fundamental shapes now like you know these diamonds these diagonals he's incorporating the sense of the warmness of the place. Sarastra is in eastern India and it's kind of got that sense of the place, but it's from a that deep perspective. Uh, it, it's trying to tap into lots of old Indian traditions whereby you can kind of be moved uh, on lots of levels simultaneously. If you went there, you would notice accurate portrayal of certain colors that you'd see in the landscape but then they are kind of given this otherworldly feeling to them and it's the cr cross fertilization of those two aspects that made his work particularly intriguing and appealing because he had the craftsmanship and everything of the western technician but he also had the eastern sensibility and it comes together in a painting like this this was such a large, this is quite a large painting. And I think, I don't know, 2010, something like that. It went for about $3 million, you know, <laughs> expensive. Uh, so the sensibility was kind of being tuned into there. Um, and going back, going to the fundamental elements that he's kind of connecting with here now, you've got things like the chevron and this circle, this energy circle, uh, which becomes a trademark of Raza's work. It's the Bindu. And like the Bindu is a kind of energy force that is the start point of everything from Indian kind of culture. They put a little Bindu red mark on the forehead of uh, people that they meet. And of course, uh, lots of the sacred people, or people, the mystics and priests there, they have this red mark on their forehead. 
the forehead of course is the mark of insight and then the dot is that presence of all knowing all seeing the start of something the start of something that has a lot of potential in it so he's trying to get rid of all his figurative tradition now and move his art forward and trying to get to something this universal language so the chevron diagonal that energy which evolves into a triangle is about moving something to a place of universal substance universal potential energy if you like trying to portray energy in a picture trying to portray what we're all kind of made up of and that evolves into these pictures and he you know he he talks about the different elements that make us what i mean by that is the different elements are like earth air water fire and ether or space and we're all made up of those different aspects in our physical being the whole world is made up of those things and if you kind of portray them in harmony then there's potential for something particularly special so he's kind of taken those elements and he's placed them within the bindu which is universal potential and then he's surrounded that by these other energy forces around the outside to be meditated upon so you get lost in the center of it and then you kind of roll around it and you take on the the more time you spend with it the more you can kind of meditatively receive from the work and you can see in this one as well you've been through that energy force is right at the center uh, and then universal potential of dark and light there's polarities of the cycles of life and things like that the triangle is about space it's about portraying space and time simultaneously these things when they're overlaid one against the other they're the universal building blocks of all our painting you know Cezanne touched on it but he didn't go into it in this kind of low way so sometimes you look at these Raza pictures and you think oh they're they're decorative they're pretty but there's something about them there's something deeply touching about them there's a lovely kind of harmony and understanding in the way he's made them and that is because of his awareness and his his practice if you like um his meditative practice and the bindu became his whole life you know that focus so he lived a long life and that meditative process of really slowing down and focusing on the core essences of existence were put into his picture one square at a time literally as you can see here one square then the next then the next then the next so these component elements that we're talking about are placed in this great big square tapestry that been do right at the center universal potential you know all the elements you know earth air you know that we just talked about water fire in these other elements the triangle and the chevron which is about space and light all placed in there and he would meditate on one particular square get it started and then move to the next and then he wouldn't finish one one square completely and then he moves on to another part of the picture so it becomes more than just a decorative artwork yeah it's it's, it's almost like a machine for meditation through color and understanding you know like the traditional malas uh, that's mandalas that's what they were they were about you know they're about transforming you but his other personal transformation that he because he had the artistic ability and awareness sensibility they have a beauty in their own in their own right you know but you can see how energy forces is a kind of contained and radiating out in places so we look at those key elements how they radiate there we can see how the the water symbol gives you a kind of stillness and things like that you can see how we've got suns and we've got fire you know those kinds of elements uh, all overlaid and then the bindu just repeats itself but with all these different kinds of modulations you know, it almost looks like the bindu at the center here and then there's the energy radiates out from it almost like a radio a radio signal going out into the world you know to have its kind of impact and then that's supported by all the other elements around the outside which you know which are kind of built up from 
fire, earth, air. So they're so strong that they, our subconscious connects with them, but they create this kind of really strong and beautiful image then. And the universal fundamental bindi there, supported by those universal colors. You just get lost in that central space, you know. It, it's, it's black, but it's, there's so much in it, you know. There's so much you can kind of, it reveals itself to you. And the revelation comes mainly because of what you surrounded it by. This almost, these colors are kind of hinting at conscious mind to get more deeply into what is in the center, you know. It's like reflect on your water element. Reflect on your fire element in you. Reflect, you know, what do they mean? You know, what does the water element mean? What does the fire element mean? What does the earth element mean in you or for you? And reflect on the spatial element in you. Those are the hints around the outside. And when you do, then you can go in deeply into that central space, which is the vastness of the universe, you know, which is potentially in all of us. We all always all of us have clear space inside us it's always there just often it's like the sun which is being obscured by the clouds we've got to let the clouds go away so we can see purely and the bindu offers that kind of option into that with what's around it as you can see in this element as well it's right in the center it's right there all the other elements are there there's a lot of water around a lot of space a coolness bring us kind of down our physical bodies of course are mostly made up of uh, uh water so it's, a, it's a, something which we've got to be very much aware of you know got to keep hydrated on all kinds of levels for example and just you can read paintings in this particular way in terms of rasa's perspective um, these some of these are quite large pictures as well so they fill your whole Eye line when you're in front of them. Um, Sura Namaska. You know, this, anyone has practiced any yoga, a salute to the sun. <laughs> oh, it takes some doing, that does, yeah. Those are the 12 positions, you know, start off with your arms up, and you go down, and then you go back up to the sun. And I'll be quite fit to do that, but if you do it, pretty good. The sun was everything. We talked about that early with his fire pictures. But then you've got fire, you've got insight coming on here you know the use of the bindu in the eye that's intuition my goal the sun flowers they all appear all in india a lot got this universal spiral which goes right back to the things we saw on the cave paintings and um, for his later work he did go back to india to research ancient indian text and he went to the caves at janta and places like that he went to rajasthan he went to the temples just to get a deeper understanding of what was going on with all those different aspects. But it's just nice to see how the whole picture is kind of put together. And the balance, the play is very good. You know, not all these squares are equal size, as you can see. Some much bigger than others. Others are kind of longer as well. You know, they're all just square. And, and to get that balance right, that you know, you can do it through intuition, of course. But if you do, then it all kind of all kind of works. So that salute to the sun, there's the sun there, there's the sun, and there's the, you know, the indication towards it. And they work imminence, um, universal text, universal understanding, very compassionate person as well, Raza. You know, he, he set up foundations in India for artists and to be supported. They also set up foundations in France as well. Uh, just so this universal understanding and opportunity was given to as many young people as he possibly could. In the midst of death, life persists. In the midst of untruth, truth persists. In the midst of darkness, light persists. You know, a universal message of optimism, you know, that radiate no matter what's going on, you know, keep it all in perspective. It will pass. At our essence, we go beyond it. We overcome, we go beyond, we just carry on and we carry on. You know, in essence, you know, that is in all of us all the time. I know it gets obscured, you know, for all kinds of reasons, but it is there, you know. And as an artist, that's what his raison d'etre was, really. And that's what he tried to share. So here he is working quite later on in his 
life on these large canvases. He said he really kind of thought till he was 93, making these wonderful, wonderful pictures. Looks like a kind of gentleman there, doesn't he? You know, uh, these are in acrylics, of course, later ones. And there he is sat in his, his studio. So they're quite large and, and the lines, you know, they're quite wavy or soft at the edges. Um, could be for a shaking hand, but you know, years ago, it, obviously it was had intent. Um, it's, it's, an, it's a way of moving between the different squares. Don't make them too hard edge cut off, you know. Don't forget it's an integrated picture if you're making one in this kind of way. He's got the, the universal on there as well, you know, in the whole piece. But the whole picture is a beautiful, colourful, resonant, but they're deeply rooted in that particular culture. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell notification.